Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens, Greg Roman, pass game breakdown. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. We are breaking down the Baltimore Ravens playoffs game. My goodness, versus the Bills. Greg Roman taking a lot of heat about the offensive structure of their pass game, and rightfully so. But it's not all him. And just like just about every team, there are layers to things when they go bad, whether it's pass protection, execution on the perimeter, play design, quarterback play, decision making, all of the above here. So again, I know that it is really easy to sit here with a clicker and a marker and be able to tell you what should happen all the time. I will try to do my best to be as objective as possible about pointing out some of the things that I think are design malfunctions, some things that aren't as optimal as they probably should be at that level on Sundays in the playoffs. But there are also some execution errors, whether it's in the pass protection unit, whether it's quarterback decision making, whether it's getting the ball out on time, all of those things will be talked about and discussed. But again, realize that it's usually never just one thing. I know it's easy to point fingers and blast people about crummy play design, and there are elements of it in this film. There's no doubt about it. But to think that it's just that is to really do yourself a disservice to evaluating the whole picture. Because Lamar Jackson deserves better. He is that special of a talent. Now, is he there yet as far he probably as far as what he aspires to be within the pocket? No. Does the system allow him to probably thrive? No. But what is the constraint? Are they not pushing the envelope because they don't have the capacity as an offensive unit, as a perimeter skill group, as decision making from within the pocket? Or are they just letting him down? Should it be more? Should he be able to do more? Because I think that there's, I can see why maybe they are self-containing themselves with only a certain number of dropback plays because there are times when there are things open down the field and for whatever reason, the ball isn't delivered. And then there are times where they run the same play a few times and it's not that great of a play. And or that there's communication errors as far as where maybe someone was open the previous time they ran the play. So just getting all those things aligned, to me, there's just some missing parts. And I'm excited to see where Lamar Jackson goes moving forward. He is a special, dynamic player in the league. He really deserves a better drop back game and really an RPO game because the run game is so special and has been so special for so long. I think everybody wants to see that matched with the pass game, with the play action game, with all the things that we maybe got a glimpse of last year during his MVP season. So what that void is, isn't for us to solve in this video, but it is fun to dive in and see exactly where where there's some gaps. Where do we should we really take some issues with the play design? And then where should we point out what it is? And it was maybe some execution errors from the quarterback position. So we're going the full spectrum in this video. Let's get it started. Welcome to the QB School. Oh my, what happened? Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, Greg Roman. The dumpster fire that was the pass game. My goodness. First one we're looking at here. Originally, I thought it was a play action where the crosser, 83, was just too shallow to give any sort of a good look. But this is really an RPO. And they get hit with a corner blitz down here to the bottom of the screen. And they're running just a variation of a swing kind of thing from the ghost or whatever we want to call this motion here. So we're coming across here. We're going back to the corner. And this was the, what I originally thought was just a play action element of it right here where this crosser, in my opinion, was just too shallow. But in reality, this is an RPO. He's getting cornered here. Corner cat, cobra, whatever. It's a great defensive call. I'm not sure where he's reading, looking, if he's looking at the defensive end. And he goes, he squeezes it, so they pull it. But he's blocked with that sift or slicer there's nowhere to go with the ball here play design i'm you know I'm not going to pretend that i have the answers but i can tell you that that's a really bad feeling getting hit with a corner blitz not protected and where are you supposed to go with the ball now should he have handed it off i'm going to say yes 
You know, the reason I think it's a, a run for, for sure is look at the left tackle getting downfield. Center run blocking, right tackle coming off the ball run blocking. You just don't see a whole lot of RPOs d designed like that. I mean, playing the what-if game, what if you get corner cat here, you know. That defensive end is blocked. Everybody in the box is blocked. Just hand the ball off. You know, if he's... I just don't know what he's looking at. If he's looking at the corner, which it sure looks like he's looking at here. All I can think is maybe he's looking at the defensive end, but that defensive end is blocked by the fullback. Sort of, theoretically. That's a rough sack early in the game on that type of play design where I think you just, you know, where's it supposed to go? Right here, this is just spacing. And I'm not sure why he doesn't throw the flat here. I think the stick down at the bottom of the screen just goes too deep. You know, the spacing up top is usually the second or third read. You never really come back and try to throw a spacing. The flat to me is wide open. Again, not knowing what they're asking him to do with the ball. This is all hypothetical. See the flat come across. You know, to me it looks like he just jumps back over to the spacing side. Now, they very well be, could be reading it like that. I've never seen it read like that, never played it read like that. I can tell you that this play design, you know, I'll stop it when he gets over to the other side. So this to me should be just stick spacing. So we're reading this flat one, and then this stick usually is running about five yards. To me, this he goes too deep for the timing of it. But regardless, if your eyes are over here, the ball goes to the flat immediately. That's kind of one together, and then on the backside it's over the ball, hitch, check down and that's spacing up top got a whole video on spacing so just come back and throw the flat but it, it looks like he never looks over there so you know maybe they're trying to rip a sit route over the ball now when we look at this if we were let's just hypothetically play the spacing to the right first so over the ball is 180 that's open in the nfl Right there, put it on his left shoulder, away from the near defender, let him catch and turn, fall, eight yards. That's open. On time. Put your foot in the ground, right there. Now, to me, he should be working his eyes left to right. I'm not going to go into the philosophical issues of why I dislike spacing, but it's a pretty good reason right here, especially if you're not going to throw what normally is the number one read. But again, is that on Greg Roman? Is that on what they're teaching him in the quarterback room? Is that on his read? Is that on Lamar just not throwing it to the first read? Then this play, you know, I, I think is probably one of the reasons why Greg Roman is getting a lot of heat. This play, to me, at best, and I don't want to offend JV football coaches out there, but this is a JV football play. This is outs on the outside, or outs on the number two by the slots, and goes on the outside. This is not an NFL football play that you run a lot. And so I'm going to talk about it a lot right here because they end up running it at least three times in just this video. I didn't watch the, I stopped watching after the interception. But this is a go, and it's usually a must outside release go too. Why? Because you want to pull that corner. And then these are outs. Now I think most teams in the league would run more option routes, but these look like speed outs, like only speed outs. So you usually pick a side based on leverage. You can throw the whole shot if you get a hard cloud, meaning that whole shot right out here, right out here. Those are not easy throws, especially to the field. But usually it's just one to two. One to two. That's it. There's not a lot of options for NFL quarterbacks. So the other thing about this is what side you pick really matters because, you know, depending on how you determine where you want to go with the ball, they usually call these best look sides. When you're into the boundary, the short side, this is a condensed field. These windows are already six yards condensed. You get six more yards of space down here. Now, even if this is the guy you want to throw it to, you know this is way more space. Now, it's harder to throw a whole shot like that, but still, he works up top. Okay, you're not always going to be right on the side you choose. Now, to me, 
I like this play a lot more versus quarters than I do versus palms or read or whatever you want to call whatever the defense is playing here. Watch these corners. This corner up top is read number two. He's going to go make a play on that out right there. See him settle his feet? He's driving that out. Down here at the bottom, it's more of a true, ends up being more of a true quarter by the corner. Now that's probably because Lamar Jackson isn't looking over here. But I really dislike that play versus Palms or Reed, where that corner is going to potentially come down. Now the other thing about it, one more time, we're going to watch it two more times in different situations, is if the out isn't there, instead of going from left to right, you really go out to out, just go out to check down. So first of all, coach up the back to get the hell out on a check down. Get out and throw it to him right there. Boom. Throw it to him. That's what I think people want to see from specifically Lamar Jackson from within the pocket. No to one, yes to two, throw the check down. But it doesn't happen in a vacuum. The check down has to get out. Hopefully the check down isn't a defensive tackle. But, you know, depending on what they want to do personnel-wise. But again, the check down's got to get out. You got to go. To me, watching him, watching Lamar Jackson play a lot of this game from the All-22, just pay attention to his eyes here. I know we spent a lot of time on this play, but it's he looks like he goes left to right to left to nothing. So to me, I just want to see more. You know, it's one thing to look people off. It's another to look people off for a reason. I don't think there's a reason to look someone off in quarters like this or two read or palms. Just play the play, deliver the ball, get the ball out of your hand. So this next one, zero by four, you know, I don't have a lot of good answers for where the ball should go here. Again, I, I think he does a great job making plays, getting outside the pocket, really doing the only thing that this pass offense had was him create outside the pocket. But for me, you know, when you get in quads, I don't hate the structure of the play. I just don't necessarily know where the ball is going to go unless you give him a full field read. And basically say, hey, if they do this, do this, do this, do that. Which is really hard. So right here, quads. This, you know, it looks like the intent of the play here is to come down here, run this little whip or arrow. Then normally, you know, if you're the Chiefs, you run this thing with Tyree Kill over here. That Tony Romo loves. This looks like just a straight vertical. This looks like an inside fade. This looks like a hitch. Hitch little whip well if they if this thing is covered or they double this where are you supposed to go with the ball maybe you know you come out here and rip a hitch to the field but you know you got to have some wide vision to be able to see that and read a whip on the other side you know again the structure of this defense I'm not thinking I have the hitch up top that looks like potential cloud or read or palms no, there's just nowhere to go with the ball. So as much as I, you know, love jumping into quads every once in a while, having an answer, not relying on Lamar Jackson to just go make a play, it's tough. If you're going to come down here and work this whip to our left, you know, he never even looks there. He looks like he's looking for that pipe shot down the middle of the field. There's a safety sitting right there. Again, great job getting outside the pocket. Easy little flick. But... That certainly wasn't created by the structure of the play design. Third and three. This is a tough one. This is one of those ones where, for me, you know, I don't love the play call. To me, this is a man call. You're getting a lot of quarters. Integrity, split field coverage. This is a man throw. There are just other throws available in this play that I think are better he's locked on this for whatever reason the vision again he's bouncing his eyes around from within the pocket now I don't love the structure of this play design by any means but let's just play it out as it's called so when we come across here where the ball ends up going on this shallow normally you know if you get some variation of zone here I might call this <clears throat> excuse me some variation of either quarters quarters match at best you know, I'm not going to dig into the weeds of it, but right here, there's someone running with a shallow. Up here, we got a what I think is an in or a basic middle field read. We're going to run this little whip, and we got a check down right here. To me, 
you know, if you're not going to allow the shallow, so I would first love to see the shallow in zone be able to settle here. So then we'd come in, the little whip there, and then you can see the triangle. All right, if you don't allow the shallow to settle, and he's got to run through this the entire way, let's now make the back get out here. Okay, so whip in, and now we get that, you know, little triangle everybody loves to talk about. This play is meant to read this defender right here, in my opinion. So if he gets depth, let's throw that whip underneath him. If he comes down at all and drives that whip, let's work that in right behind him. And that's that that's the essence of this thing in zone. So, you know, if he if he kind of tweeners both, you know, I think you can make the argument that you could throw that in or hook right behind him. But if not, get the ball to the check down. Now the check down is out on time. So we don't like that high low. Check down, first down. Check down, first down. Check down, first down. Not panic all the way across for a runaway versus zone. Tough. I see why he keeps running out there. There's nobody out there, even though technically to me this is a variation of quarters more than anything else. So I'm fine with him running out there, but the throw, I'm not I'm not fine with the throw. He, that's the only covered guy. Except for the X up top. So, you know, do I love the play design? No. Do I love the execution of it from the quarterback? No. Just work the high low to the check down. You can see he, he his eyes are to our left. But then it goes all the way back across. It's just like a panic. Tough. Next one here, a three by one. Bring it all the way across. To me, you know, this is one of those ones that showcases a few things. I think a lot of teams run this variation of what I'm going to call a glance. It's it's not really a glance. It's more of a run to grass type area by this receiver to our left. He falls down. All right. Not knowing the intent of the play, you know, just talking pure design here. I love how they get to this. So when I'm used to saying when they shift motion this thing so he's coming in motion why does he come in motion like this to hide this split okay so now the split is hidden he's coming up here and running into this space now he falls i think you could make the argument that lamar jackson should let this thing go you can't see people come out of routes yeah people are going to slip sometimes okay now if you don't like this for whatever reason these guys played so much split field quarters variations of that that taking shots at posts are great ideas they come back here, and I think this thing is like a massive big Dino. This is there. So whether whatever the design of this thing is, again, we're not in the room. Can't tell you for sure. But if they're trying to get this in this area, that ball is there. If they're trying to take a massive shot over the top of quarters with a post safeties, that shot is there. So taking the sack here, you know, this is, uh, I think it's fair to attack Greg Roman for some of these for some of the play design and the offensive structure, but this isn't one of them. Throw the big post. So you got that glance down here. One, no. Make the argument that you could rip it in that second window. Post over the top is for sure there. Let it go. <coughs> Let it go. Tough to take a sack. You know, there's just an element of getting the ball out of your hand from within the pocket. It comes either from trust. You know, it looks like he's almost like just faux shouldering that thing. Like, whoop, I'm going to throw the post. Well, go throw the post. Except your feet are lined up like you're throwing to the Gatorade. And then he's late. You can see he tries to, like, find it. He, like, over this, back, ugh. Tough. He knows he missed it, too. They had a shot. Third and 18. And this is an important one for a few different levels. First, this is a big-time conversion. Double post with an over. Doing the old over to the over team. Love it. This is a big-time conversion. Third and 18. Like how they got there, secured the edge. He sees it, rips it, stops him in the hole. Lots of great stuff. So, again, just 
play design, offensive architecture, pass game. Everybody's dumping on him. Fair enough. Let's take a peek here. This is where the ball ends up going, right? How we get there. Double post. Here, really, it's just another over post. Okay, the other thing I love about this is basically you get double chip here. Okay, third and long. Take the edge off the pass rush. There it is. Now, the thing to pay attention to for me is, yes, the ball ends up going here. But what does this safety do? So, this safety drives that over. Normally, this corner would invert replace. But for whatever reason, they're not. So, he kind of hangs back. He's driving this first over. That's where the ball ends up going. Great first down. But this first post is wide open. Okay, Now, I'm not mad at Lamar Jackson for not throwing it. Big conversion on a third and 18. I don't think you would anticipate this look, this structure from this defense. Right? One more time. The corner not getting depth. Driving the first over. Okay. But then not passing this thing off. Not staying with the vertical two here. Letting this thing go. And this is this is wide open. Okay. N again, not mad at Lamar Jackson or Greg Roman. But I am mad at the sideline communication for saying, hey, Lamar, when we run this again, take a peek at the number two post. Okay, look at the post come open. Just take a peek at it. Be aware of what that safety does with the over we're trying to get it to, and be aware. On the sideline, that's what happens on the sideline. There are people paid a lot of money in the booth to watch these types of things. That's number That number two post is wide open. Why is it so important? Because they come back to it later in the game, and he scrambles for a first, but it's wide open again. You don't get shots like this versus the same play, same play design, same situation, third and forever in the NFL. You don't. You can't miss those opportunities. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support. In addition, if you're not ready to go full subscriber yet, please hit the like button, comment in the comments. I will do my best to get to as many as I possibly can. Again, I appreciate you watching. Thank you for the engagement. Let's keep it going. Second and 14, two by two. We get a little scissors down here to the bottom of the screen. Both the flat and the corner are wide open. Now, it looks like his eyes are to the left for some reason, like he thinks he's hot. Again, being able to know where the line is going, everything tethered to the pass protection, where's the line sliding to? It looks like they're going all the way out to 24. He looks like he thinks he's hot. Just drop back and read the high-low on the quarters to our left. Again, where are his eyes looking? His eyes are looking left. Right here, that little peak to the left. There's no look off. It's quarters to our left, their right. Just work the high-low on the corner. It's not, this is, a, this is a bad play. This is a bummer. Because this is wide open down here to the bottom. Again, you run this much quarters, you're going to get posted. So they're running post scissors here. The outside flat defender blitzes. Like, he, he thinks he's, you know, looks like a, he's got a peeler situation here on the back. The back goes out to the flat. You throw the flat or the seven. They're wide open. So, yeah, there were some design issues. No doubt about it. And I don't think this is the most complicated play in the world. But just play the play correctly. It looks like his eyes are all over the place. Again, fundamentals-wise, he's always going to be toesy. Drops his arm angle sometimes. Fine. No, nobody cares about the arm angle anymore. But we do care about the accuracy, getting the ball out on time where your eyes are. This is third and forever. Third and 14. They're running a variation of dagger here, it looks like. Now, I've got some issues with the offensive design here of this play. But it, Lamar Jackson right here, he is... Pointing to 58. That's where the offensive line is going. They're going to 58. Lamar Jackson is hot off two off to the left. That's a duel on the back. So 49 and whoever's off the edge. 24. He's hot off 24. Now you can either buy enough time if they come from depth to rip that dagger. Or you need to throw hot. Now it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of great hot options here. But I will tell you that this is going way back old school. Brett Favre used to love to run to normally on, we'll just call this a drive route, shallow, whatever you want to call it. Normally, 
in most West Coast worlds, the point would go here and the duel would be one to two. Brett used to love to bring that thing all the way back and basically flip it. What does that mean? That means that now the, the line is going here and the back's duel is one to two. Why? Because if both these guys blitzed, he thought that he could bail away from it and throw this shallow wide open the other way, running out the back door. Now, not everybody can do this. I get it. But just an idea about the point options, what that means pass protection wise. Now, scheme down the field. I'm guessing this is where the ball's supposed to go. You know, it's hard to tell exactly just with the thing of it. But if he takes five, if you think that this guy's coming from such depth that you don't have to throw hot, that you can take your five step from gun and rip this, I think you probably could. Now, the design architecture that I don't love here is that there are really no hots. Why? Because this guy isn't running that shallow immediately. He's taking the edge off. So he's chipping and then getting into the shallow. That will never work for a hot. So you got to take five here and rip that dagger. Good luck. This is not a world that I would want to live in within the pocket. Again, he kind of shorties that drop at the backhand too. One, two, three, four, five. Again, it's there. If he takes five and throws with some anticipation, one, two, three, four, you know, he shorties that drop. He's going to get smacked. Let it go on that in. It's there. It's always going to be there versus zero if you can get it off. But again, are any of these guys peeking at the line of scrimmage on the left? Look at the two and the three receiver. Are they peeking on their route like they're hot? Hell no. What What is happening? This is just not sound pass plays. I mean, it's... I don't, I don't necessarily hate the call because dagger third and forever, great. But you got to have somebody hot. You can't just let your guy get back there and get smacked versus zero. Next one here, little bunch quads. Again, to me, this is a two-minute drive situation. At some point, you have to throw a post when people are playing this much quarters. Okay, so the number one on the bunch down here to the bottom of the screen, you know, it's where the ball needs to go. Now, I get it. I got a clicker. It's easy when you got the clicker. Fair. But again, it looks like to me he thinks he's hot. He's blocked up. Just take your drop and throw the post. Now, he gets there eventually because he's just the best, probably the best athlete in the league. But I think this is the part that's, you know, worthy discussion about being able to play from the pocket and make these throws and just always relying on your athleticism. Just play from the pocket. They're going to pick this up. That's your left tackle blocking 24. But he bails. He sees it, and that's a great throw. It is a great throw. But is that the soundest, easiest way to do that? No, it's not. Just take a drop and throw the post. They're going to play flat-footed corners. Go post them. Again, making a really hard throw, running to your right, back across the field. It worked out here. But I would love for them to just find a way to protect it up and go block as opposed to getting to the post through, you know, quads essentially. Bunch with the back strong. Just tough to live in that world. First and 10, two-minute warning. Guess what play's coming? Again, verse palms or read down here to the boundary. Again, fortunate right here that the wide receiver runs through the corner, or else that'd be a serious collision. But again, going out, you know, this is probably the one time where you see it called in the league, two minute situations, get a completion on the sideline. But again, a four yard completion, I don't know, just feel like there are better ways to do this. Again, you can see the split field coverage. You know, pick a side, get what you can get. This is the one time I probably thought it was done good enough. Not the three other times they run it. Again, the ball gets out decisive. His eyes pick a side. There it is. Boom. Get it out. Easy. Second and five. Now they're running a variation of mesh. Now, I haven't watched this you know, every single game and charted the coverage, but I haven't seen a whole lot of man. I'm not sure why we want to get into mesh 
here immediately. The ball, you know, not only is it mesh, but it's mesh done kind of poorly. Not kind of poorly, poorly by the wide receivers. They need to get up there, settle up, and settle up. Have this wide receiver stop his feet. Make the throw easy and get a completion. But second and five, to me, this is a man call in most for most offenses. When he steps up here, first of all, we don't have to take off and run. Just get the ball out of your hand right there. The wide receiver on our left needs to stop his feet, settle up, put the ball right on him, as opposed to making a crazy circus difficulty throw. So again, I mean, I feel like it's being a little redundant drawing up mesh on this channel, but just drawing it up exactly how they end up getting there eventually. But this deep hook is probably where the ball needs to go versus most zones first. And then we get this mesh. So the mesh element of it here really needs to be where this wide receiver, when he comes across and there's nobody there, just settle your feet. Settle. Make the throw easy. Don't keep drifting, 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 and then be shocked that it's behind you. So, you know, not only do not necessarily love the call, hate the execution of it, just settle up. Make it easy for the quarterback. That doesn't get easier than that to settle up. There's a corner out there on the flat. Stop your feet. Frustrating. So not only does the drop back design structure not get me going, but the execution of it is rough. Now these first couple plays here coming out of the third quarter are probably where I think Lamar Jackson needs to live and the Ravens need to live. This is RPO world. They ran this play early in the game. Just a variation of stick. A little GT stick. Now I will say that when you do first level RPOs, it's so much harder to throw the ball down the field. And it's fine right here because the defensive end on our left that we're reading doesn't come up the field because he's terrified of Lamar Jackson running. But GT, any first level RPO where we're reading someone at the defensive line of scrimmage, your quarterback's going to get hit. Most of those first level reads are tethered to some sort of Q run or that triple option bubble. Again, you can see the stick down here to the bottom of the screen. Stick, this is the same thing I thought it was going to be with spacing earlier in the video. There it is. Boom. He gets smacked. But this is where he needs to live, in my opinion. He is great at these, at this. Threaten him with the run, get the ball out of his hands quickly, quick throws, sharp, put it on him. He's got a great quick release, flick, perfect. Let's live in this world. Another example right here, a little slant up top to the number two, put it on him, boom. Again, RPOs, a little wide zone, outside zone, stretch, whatever to the left. Get a little bit fortunate here. I can't tell you who they're reading. They bring what I'm going to call saw dog, the two outside guy, the two outside linebacker types. You know, get fortunate whether they're reading 49 or the linebacker on our right, just on the edge of the screen. We can't block the guy over the center. But that's too easy. Will pressure RPO great. So just getting into more of these types of things because this type of drop back, second and long here, I think this is where most NFL quarterbacks live. This is, we're going to go through this here. There's a bunch of guys open. But for whatever reason right now, this is not where he's most comfortable. Because whatever, whatever the read here was, there's somewhere to throw the ball. There's really two people wide open. So this is this isn't what I would consider not one of the easiest type reads throws in the world. This is a we're basically going to high low outside on the corner. Okay, so whoever's out here is getting high load, and then on the inside we're going to do the same thing here. Little basic or middle field read. So we're getting high load here. Excuse me, here and here. Pick your high low. Pick your matchup you want. This is wide open. This is wide open. So the, the ball's got to come out. The, that, that's the one of the themes of this thing. The ball's got to come out in this drop back game. Boom. Right over the ball that on the hash. If you're working the inside, there it is. Now it looks like he's maybe trying to work the double move down here to the bottom of the screen. 
He's over the top. Just get your eyes back. If you don't like it, he stays over the top. But again, that's seven up top, wide open. The sit over the ball, open. It looks like he comes back and looks at it. Again, from the back end, we'll be able to see, see exactly what his eyes look like. But if you're working 83 and 89, the ball goes to 83, right? I mean, he's looking right there. Throw it to him. Otherwise, if you're working that 7, okay, you're working the 7, throw the 7. Now, I get it that right guard takes an L, but 1, 2, 3, get the ball out. If you're going to throw the 7 on time, that's where the ball comes out. Just so rare is there feel like there's a drop back and the ball gets out on time to someone who's winning. Okay, look at the defensive coach down here to the bottom. Third and 13, what's, what's coming up? The over and the double post. Okay. We converted the third and 18 the last time. Here comes the third and 13. Check that that number two post up top. One, two, three, four, five. Up. There it is. I mean, that's a lot of space. It's even more open than the last one. Now it takes a hot second, but he's back there. His eyes are down running, and he gets it because he's the best athlete in the league. But again, if we're talking Ravens' developed passing game, you know, it wasn't like there weren't people running open down the field. Ooh, what's the center get here? Is that the center? No, the right guard. Oh, feet tripped up. But again, for me, when he steps up here, oh, what a shot to that inside post 83 running to the left. But he gets it. And then, you know, this is it. This is the the kind of dual world you live in when you have such a someone who's so dynamic making plays on their own versus making plays from the pocket. And I get it that he's not the normal type of pocket passer. But if we're talking about being critical of the offensive structure of these plays, it is definitely fair, some of them. But some of them, there were people open. Really more than one occasion. Still, crazy, dynamic play. Special. Second and nine. And we're only down seven at this point. Just a simple two by two. What do you think's coming? Again, to me, this is tough to run this concept versus palms or two read with the corners. See the corners reading? They're looking through one to two. When you run an out like that, you are cruising for a bruising for unless you're willing to make that whole shot up top. I think that wide receiver up top needs to either collision the corner or run outside, must outside release. Like we get down here to the bottom. But again, to me, the ball needs to go to the back. Now, the back doesn't even get out this time. So again, this is what is frustrating from just an offensive run at a high level. Get the back out on a check down. What is he doing? What is the back doing? Now Lamar Jackson does a great job here going... Basically, left to right to left to right, back and forth. But this is not a world you normally live in, where you go right to left, all the way across on a quick out from the slot. I'd much rather go quick out to check down in a sound, well-run, well-functioning pass offense. So again, you don't very rarely to go quick out to quick out on both sides. In fact, I would not recommend it. It's great right here because they basically drop him because his eyes are the other way. So that corner's not locked in on him. But just get out. If you're the back 35, check your pass barrel, get out. On a check down, what's he doing? He looks like he's in a walkthrough. I don't even want to say nice job finding a completion because it, it's fortunate more than anything else. And then this is the pick, you know, well criticized on a number of different levels. I'll to give you my take on it. You know, pretty amazing that this is the first red zone pick he's ever thrown, I think, was the tweet I saw somewhere. But this is a pretty common, what I'm going to call red two, really it's just Tampa two in the red zone concept. But, you know, again, depending on how they get there, this double mug look makes it probably a little bit confusing. To just about everybody but at the but what this really is is here here 
think they run like a corner stop here. So normally, when I'm used to playing this play, is this is supposed to look like four verticals here. And then you're supposed to hit the brakes. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the depth of these wide receivers. There's no point in going halfway into the end zone. Most teams will tell you to run these at the bot. You get six points for catching it here or here. So let's run it at the bottom of the logo, bottom of the letters. You should, it has to be a yard, so a yard into the end zone for your little coaching point. Yard into the end zone. And then you really read. If they're going to play Tampa 2, meaning someone's running out, the mic is running out to the middle, split field coverage, half field coverage, you read this player right here. If he is taking this away, you throw this. If he's taking this away, yep, you throw this. Okay, so that, that, if, so really what this is at its core is we've got this guy getting into the end zone, into the end zone, and then normally the back check's down here, but it looks like they have the corner stop on. What you're really doing here is these two underneath hook defenders here and the outside linebacker on the other side, it's they can't be right. So you can really use your eyes here to manipulate. If you want this throw, you look here. If you want the middle hook, you look to the left. And when your eyes go to the left, if this defender comes over, then you throw the check down. So it's just two on three or three on two if you play offense. But this is, you know, obviously staring at them. But I don't think they help themselves with the depths of these things first. Now, if he throws it at the bottom of the B, it's obviously going to be a touchdown. Again, I get it. I have the clicker. You know, heel clicky, toesy, you know, could really use a back check down here. Not sure who's coaching the backs, but get out. It's a sign of a well-oiled pass program, pass game. Get the back out on a check down, throw the check down. So, obviously, brutal on so many different levels. But, you know, knowing where the bones are buried on this type of play. Again, hard to see here, but I would love 89 to throw the brakes on right there. Anticipate that throw. You can see the linebacker on the other side. Is it 58? If he's going to squeeze that way to your left, then you come back and throw the stop or the check down. I would love the check down to be out to the right. Just tough. I mean, that's brutal. I, I really do think that the depths didn't help this play. Didn't help Lamar Jackson at all. Ball needs to go to the two or to the check down. The check down's not even out. So tough. Man. Whew. That is a wrap. Lamar Jackson, Greg Roman, Baltimore Ravens, pass game issues. Right? That's being nice. Got some issues across the board. Uh, seeing what they're going to do, be shocked if they come back with the exact same approach that they had this year, next year. But that is what the offseason is for. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. I appreciate it. I will see you next time. Have a good one.